Hi, my name is Ting. I'm the DS manager in REST team at Uber. I'll take this moment to share with you some of our recent developed technologies in risk management. So about myself, I got PhD and bachelor in computer science with background in machine learning and computer vision. Before joining to Uber, I work with several other companies and research labs as a research scientist. So I will start with a brief overview of the risk management. Then I will dive deeper into three different applications, including the GPS moving chip detection for fake trips and the sequence modeling to classify behavior, user behaviors between good user and bad users. Also, I will talk about the knowledge, Uber Knowledge Graph machine learning platform. So for risk management, we know that fraud not only affects Uber's financial, but also hurts user experience. There are different types of fraud. For payment fraud, usually the fraudster will use stolen credit card to pay for Uber chips so that they can cash out credit card. And uh, when the real owner of the credit card finds that out, the owner will call the bank to dispute the transaction. By doing that, Uber has to take all the loss. So to maximize the profit from stolen credit card, the fraudster will offer agent service trips. So what is agent service trips? Let's see, if you want to take a trip to San Francisco airport by UberX, and that will cost you $100, then you can order an uh, agent service trip from some like a website or some chatting rooms from the fraudster, and they will give you a discounted trip at $50. Then they will pay for that trip using stolen credit card. And this is how they can make money and get money out from all the stolen credit card. And for incentive abuse, you know, Uber offer bonus for both rider promo and drivers if driver refers some other drivers to be a Uber driver. And if driver can finish a certain amount of trips during the certain amount of time, then Uber can give extra money. The fraudsters will leverage all these by creating fake accounts or creating fake trips so that they can get a lot of incentive from Uber. Finally, the, oops, the account takeover. The fraudster will hack into Uber driver account, rider account. They will giving phishing phone call to drivers to get their password so that they can withdraw all the money from driver account. So fraud fighting is actually a very difficult task. We are not fighting with a single individuals, but we are actually fighting with a group of very, very well organized and high technology, hardworking and smart people. And on the right hand side of the picture, you can see that's their customer service people working with the chatting rooms to taking the agent service order. So I will start with the GPS moving trip detection. So in Uber, everything is about location integrity. So if you, in Uber, if you look into the system and you can see there's a trip going on, but how do you know if this trip is real or fake? The fraudsters can leverage the fake location apps to create fake trips. I believe you all play with Pokemon Go before, and in Pokemon Go, you can use a spoofing app to spoof yourself to a location to catch the monster, and people can do the same thing to Uber. For payment fraud, they can create, like they can create a rider account, add the stolen credit card as a payment profile, then they will use the spoofing app to create fake trips for driver account, then use the rider account to pay for their own trip through the driver account. By doing that, they cash out the credit card. And the, the fraudsters can also use the swooping app to create a bunch of fake trips so that they can boost their total number of trips to meet the requirements in the incentive. And they can get the extra money from Uber for the incentive. So how to detect this? This is an example of the GPS swooping app. In this example, you can see like a fraudster is operating a phone using the rider account to request a trip. And uh, there's another phone running on a driver account using the fraudster using this account to take the trip. And he's also using the GPS spoofing app to spoof the entire location of the trip. So you can see that a trip is happening over the countertop at home without even having car persist. 
The first technology we developed is to leverage all the Uber historical trip data to build the attitude profile of all the world. So in this example, you can see a real trip, a real trip's attitude travels along the Earth's surface. However, a fake trip is flying the sky or sometimes travel underground. And we do the same thing for speed. We developed a speed profile using Uber all the historical trip data for every hour, every day, and all the road segment all over the world. And in this example, you can see that for the fake trip, a large percent of the speed, as shown in red, are abnormal. But for real trip, this percentage is very small. The location integrated defense task is very complicated. So the data can be from apps, emulators, or even bad devices. The two techniques I just described about GPS profiling is app dependent, independent. However, it has some limitations. Because if the, in a certain region, there are not a lot of Uber chips, we cannot build a solid profile. So we also leverage other type of profiling like geohash profiling using the information about the chip probability happened in a certain geohash or the fraudulent signups happened in a certain geohash. We combine this information and cross check that with other GPS feature independent information. For example, the fraud, the financial loss in a region or the um, device model, chip or user level features. We get all these and send some chips for manual review. We have a very strong manual re review team and uh, they can provide us very good label set as, long as, uh, as well as discover new features. Combining the features and the labels, we build machine learning models for GPS moving detection. On the other side, as I mentioned, we already know there are a bunch of GPS spoofing apps available in App Store. What we can do is to emulate spoofing apps so that we can augment our label set. And uh, at the same time, we can leverage the deep learning technologies to do anomaly detection and reduce the effort in feature engineering. Then now I will talk about the sequence modeling for classify user behavior. You know, when people are operating the Uber app, Uber actually keep a record of all the user, user interactions with the app, such as users editing the pickup location or job of location, move the pin around in the map, or even like uh, editing the payment profile, adding a promo, promotional code, and click the trip request button. So these information, are, we call it tab string log. So Uber has the service to keep a record of each interactions. We call it tab streams. We think that the fraudster may behave very differently in terms of the interaction with Uber app. Let's imagine there's an agent service user, the user's interaction and comparing with that user, a good user's interaction with Uber app is very different. And this is extremely useful for new user at first request, first trip request, because at that moment, we haven't gained a lot of information about the new user. However, this data is actually very high dimensional, massive and messy. So it's very difficult to do feature engineering for that. That's why we want to leverage deep learning methods for better feature engineering. So to give you some examples, on the right hand side, that's the good user behavior. Imagine if you're a good user to Uber and the first time you sign up and open the Uber app, most of the time of your time will be spent on like uh, look at the different buttons and uh, uh, look at the, the different products of, the, of Uber, such as what's the difference between Uber X and Uber Black. But for a bad user on the left hand side, because the, if they are offering agent service, they must be very familiar with Uber app already. And what they are going to do is like uh, editing, spend a lot of time editing the pickup and job of location, move the ping around so that they want to make sure they are ordering the trip for the people at the correct position. And they will also spend time in editing the payment profile because they want to add the stolen credit card into payment profile. So we view the top stream as time series data. And we use one hot encoding to represent each tab. We also append the timestamp at the end of vector so that we can capture the difference of the time durations. 
and those vectors will be the input to our model. This is a model infrastructure. We use deep learning LSTM model, short for long short term memory model to build a classify to classify between the good user behavior and the bad user behavior. And here the activation layer is the final output. It gives us the probability of how bad that behavior is. And the dense layer, the 64 dimensional vector is actually can be viewed as a encoded feature layer. And both the activation layer, which is a scalar number, and the dense layer, the 64 dimensional vector, can be used as an input for our final business model. So there are multiple different use cases. For promo fraud and the payment fraud, we can use the tap stream sequence between sign up and the first trip request to build a model and predict if that uh, trip is a promo abuse trip or the trip will potentially have some payment problems. We can also take a look at both driver and the rider behavior be before the first trip request and, take a, and build a model to classify like if this driver and rider are colluded with each other because Uber's platform is random dispatch. If the actions between driver and rider are synchronized, that's more like collusion. So finally, let's take a look at the payment fraud model as an example. On the right side, that's our baseline model performance. It's our business model. The final score of this model will be used as triple request in real time for preventing a payment fraud trip from being happening. And then we add the final score the, from the activation layer and the 64 dimensional encode feature layer as two additional input features for this on um, baseline model, we can see we can lift the, the recall by about 60%, in particular for new user and the first trip request. Finally, I'll talk about the Uber Knowledge Graph platform. So what is Uber Knowledge Graph? It is actually a real-time graph enables singular and holistic view of all the Uber entities such as like um, driver, rider, trip, orders, and uh, the interaction between all those entities. For example, a driver drove a trip, a rider taken a trip, or a rider refer a friend, and uh, the other facts about them, such as the, the ratings, the lifetime orders of the rider, and we derive some inference based on those information, like the risk and safety scores for the rider. So we start from the quantity here, and we build the connections of them, and then we derive the inference. So finally, the Uber knowledge graph will build a graph query service and allow the final business solution and the users to build the solution on top of that, in particularly for risk, safety, and the threat. So for graph machine learning platform, the query engine we built, there are two types of query engines. First is a OLTP query. This is very similar to like an API course. You can real time get the graph feature for a certain user. The second query engine is called OLAP. This is more similar to Hive. You can run a batch job and get the features for a group of users offline. And both the real time feature and uh, the offline feature can be saved in the feature store and passed to Uber machine learning platform to build for other people to build machine learning models. This is an example use case of the OLTP query. So when the driver wants to go online, we want to prevent the already reject driver or risky driver from coming back to the Uber platform again. So what we do is using Uber knowledge graph, we take a look at the connections of this new, of this driver by connecting the, this driver to other drivers through like devi device payment and uh, driver license and other informations. If we found that those who are connected to this driver are already banned or have some safety tags, we will stop this driver from going online. We make sure all the PI information are hashed and uh, follow all the GDPR requirements at this moment. We also built a graph visualization GUI, allows the, the analyst ops to investigate all these fraud patterns. 
and they can use this to detect patterns, take actions, and drive automated preventions. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is a picture wall of risk team and recording the moment that we are not doing fraud fighting. By the way, we are hiring. <laughs> Welcome to join. <laughs>